and save the save new folks. All right. So basically, um, within the save framework, scale the Java framework, we have an event called BI plane, which is the product implement plane. Just to do an analogy, think about like a big sprint plane of teams, where teams get together and uh, they will, you know. Talk, try to solve dependencies, they will try to optimize the work, they will try to uh, talk about prioritization, their capacity, how much they can live it all together, integrate this soft work in a PI. I will call, I will call I mention a lot of times PI. So when we say PI, think about this sprint planning of for this sprint of two or three months of sprint of teams, just to make an analogy, right? So I joined that company two weeks before the, that PI planning and the scrum master of a team, two teams, and then I was talking to the dev manager and said, oh, we need to start uh, discussing what's the capacity plan, right? What is our capacity in terms of how much work we will be able to take on and so on. And he said, yeah, that's nice, let's do it. And I asked him, so how do you usually do it? I'd like to see how they usually do it. So he said, ah, I have a spreadsheet here. I can see here. And I do based on this spreadsheet. As you can see in the spreadsheet, summarize says every developer should deliver seven points. We have two week sprints, they have 10 days, so it's 0 0.7 points per day per average per developer. So let's take the bank holidays, and whenever they are on holidays, let's take this from the perfect velocity, it was called, I like that name, perfect velocity. And let's add some fat at the end for the upcoming work, something that will come up. Whereas we know that it's going to I just thought, mm, maybe that's not too much, too reliable to do some forecasts from some planning, right? I'm pretty sure that they're not as like as ours. They say, OK, let's look some historical data, velocity or whatever they have. And then I ask about the, so can you show me do you have any tool like Jira or Rally or whatever where you have the, the historical data about what we've been living in the field in less sprints or less PI? I said, yeah, I have it. Uh, and he showed me something like that. Uh, this is just something that I try to represent, but it's basically they delivered in a PI the same amount of start points and they planned and completed was 100%. What they planned, they delivered. Perfect team, isn't it? <laughs> Well, totally reliable to use that data. Let's use that data and I'll start it, right? That's a bit bad to me. So, mm, there's a, a high risk to take this into account. But that's what we had at that time. And I will tell you how we evolved throughout our journey, possibly around a year from this. So, the takeaway here for me that I can say is paper accepts everything. You can put everything on a paper, piece of paper. It will also accept everything. But whenever reality and complex kicks in, it will reach it as a snack, right? And also, I, I'm a big fan of data. Data, you're going to see it. But data can be gamed as well. So we have to care about the data we're going to use. So that we went through that PI, that is the PI planning. So we went through the, the PI three months down, six sprints after. Uh, then I start gathering some information, some data from the teams. Then I start gathering the throughput. How many of you have heard about throughput? Some? Yes? So basically they were using start pointing. So start points, we still have start points. But I start gathering it. <coughs> so the throughput you can uh, see as the amount of work items, amount of stuff that we get from to do to done. In a sprint, I would say that it's sprint planning. We planned some stuff. How many items we delivered by the end of the sprint? Pretty much this, we were using Scrum, we were developing Scrum. So in that case, I was uh, collecting this data. So the companistas here, we argue about the commitment point and other things. I will just leave it to the sprint and that's what I did at that time. So I just collected what we were delivering within the sprint. So I started doing that. And but why throughput? Why not start points? Why would you use throughput? And I'll tell you why. Uh, once I did an experiment with start points, uh, I was in a, a commercial team, a merger organization, and I heard that the delivery manager somewhere was comparing teams. 
There were two teams working out of the same backlog. We had a high level estimation together, but the teams would go off in the sprint planning and have their own estimations. Uh, and basically, he, were, he was comparing storage accounts. And I heard about that, but if you see the number of stuff that each team was delivering per sprint, the team that was delivering less start points had more items. So basically, they were not using the base but enough start points. That's very complex and so on. But what I did was a simple experiment. I went to that team and said, look, we are being compared to the other team. On purpose. I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Guess what will happen in the next sprint? We doubled our velocity. You see? That was like the miracle. Just do it and now we have doubled our Masara capacity and our delivery, right? The miracle is done. But when I was looking at the throughput, how many stories, defects, and so on we were delivering, it was about the same. Mm -hmm. So if you were estimating one, you know, we estimate as two, two as three, or three as five, we are putting like 67% on top of what we have in our estimation. So it was not reliable, in my opinion. I would, I left them doing that because I think it's important that there are benefits if you are using the 3Cs, card conversation confirmation, but I start also getting the throughput. And the throughput would include a lot of things that we have. Delays, interruptions, people on holidays, Christmas, and everything else. That was the real thing that was happening within the teams. And of course, I just went there and did some maths. I had some data, I summed it all, divided by the number of spins, Got the average next PI planning. So the next PI planning, what I did, just got the average, the number of items we had at that point, and this burned down chart pretty much. I guess that this may work here in Germany, that we have like a fixed backlog, it won't change. And the velocity is like always like <laughs> linear and we deliver everything. Yeah. No? I thought that here in Germany we will do that. Unfortunately, in Ireland and back in Brazil, I'm from Brazil, that doesn't happen like that. My backlog we override, I was we were doing for, for sure what I call Bidoof. Jonathan used this morning as Doofed. Big design up front or big upfront design. And of course, things, my, back, my backlog will for I in a matter of six prints, for sure, all right? And it won't be like a linear progression. I won't be delivering that. So that I started playing a bit, oh, sorry. Then I, I, I just realized that average is extremely dangerous. And this is another takeaway, folks. If you are using average, average only, you are setting like oh, the threshold in a very high level for risks here. One single number will not, uh, provided the context for analysis. And then I start playing with histograms, right? Histograms basically is, I'm just putting in a chart the occurrence of the throughput we had in the sprints. For example, once we delivered like six items, uh, three times we delivered 19, once we delivered 21, and so forth. So the, the, the occurrence that had of that throughput. And here I could do some uh, slightly better analysis. In this case specifically, I was lucky, that was Christmas, I know what happened in Christmas there, but here my outliers kind of balanced out things in between those between 19 and 24, where I brought my average uh, under my median and my boat. But what I'm saying here, I can bring this example, let's suppose you had this histogram, and we, we were using average. What <coughs> happened here in terms of blaming your current capacity for this? My average is 27 now, which is here. How many times do you deliver 27 or more? Two out of 10. That will deliver at least 27 or more. Right? 27 or more, just two. Medium is when I, I split this, uh, the group and try to pick, to pick the, the 50. The 50, or the in the middle, the item that is in the middle, right? It's 24. And the, the, the occurrence that happened the most was 24. Everything underneath the average. If I was using the average, I would put more for this than that. And so I start playing so distribution matters. Just look at that and don't go for a single number. Look for something more uh, 
analyze the data, analyze the, the whole context, not just a single number. And then they start playing with something a bit more advanced. Going to sleep plan again, I had an idea of how many items we were doing, doing in, a, in a PI, so we start playing, and they like pretty much came with the best case scenario, the most likely, and the worst case scenario. Playing with the standard deviation, playing with percentiles and so on, I, I had an idea that we would possibly be within this range, right? But still, my backlog was not fixed, things would happen tomorrow. Usually, it never happened, by the way, it never happened that, that we took work out. Usually it just increases. I don't know if it happens here as well, but over there it's, just, it's always increasing. So that uh, it still was not good. We evolved, it was getting better, but still we were facing problems in terms of planning two or three months ahead. Um, so that I heard about Monte Carlo. How many of you have heard about Monte Carlo? There have been many people here. Nice casino. Nice casino. And <laughs> the name came from there when one guy went there and literally broke a casino uh, in Monte Carlo. And that's when they, they, they named this Monte Carlo as Monte Carlo simulation because of a guy that went there and used probability and maths or statistics to really break or break a, a, a casino. But here, just for the message is, see as Monte Carlo is a brutal force method for forecasting, right? So estimation is a way of forecasting, in that guesstimation, I would say. But what I would like to bring now is how to use a um, probabilist forecast. So let me try just to uh, do an analogy for us to understand what really the method of Monte Carlo simulation is. Let's suppose you have a die, right? And you want to score 12. What is the probability to score 12 if you roll the die once? <laughs> Why? <laughs> that must, must, so six, six is zero, right? And uh, what is the best scenario? If I'm the luckiest person in this room, what is the best scenario? How many times I have to roll? Two, because I have to get to six. And if I usually, Murphy, I'm the worst, uh, or the worst, not the, the luckiest person in this room, how many times do I have to roll dice to get 12? Twelve. Twelve times, get always one. Easy, isn't it? However, what about the other combinations? When I roll three times, four times, five times, how many combinations do we have? 36. 36. But the combination, the, 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 it, will, it will be exponentially, we're going to have much more than 36. For consider the 384 rolls and so, so forth, you're going to have thousands, I would say. So, what we do here, let's suppose, for example, with pre rolls, I still want to, I want to score 12. I have to have scored 12. I have three dices right now. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to throw the three dices and I'm going to sum up. What is the value of the three dice all together? And for every time that that value happens, I increase one in that occurrence. So if I throw three dice and I got 13, I will put one here. If I throw it again, I got 15, I will put one here. I throw it again, I got 13, I will put one plus one. How many times that appeared? But I want to do this 10 times, maybe 100 times, 1,000 times. 10,000 times, a lot, brutal force, a lot of times, right? And by, to calculate the probability to get 12, we do a simple math in here. We get, every time that you got 12 or more, and divided, sum of all of them, and divided by the number of times that I tried. In this case, here is 5,000. So what happened is, I tried, got these appearances, this name, this number will vary based on you know, your simulations, but I got around 37% doing 5,000 times the probability to get 12 or more, right? So what is it like with software development? Now we go to, no, 
gambling and now software rent. What, what is the relation with that? So the knowledge is here. My die or my dice is related to my throughput variability. I can get one, two, three, four, five, or six in a dice. In a die, right? My throughput also can vary here. In my case was varying from six to thirty-one. And score how much we want to score is pretty much my my batch. How how many your product backlog? How many many items? How many stuff you want to deliver? And finally. The number of rows that you're going to need is the number of iterations. In my case, what was in iterations because I was working in a deal of uh, sprints. But you can also, you're going to see, we can talk about data. Date, sorry, date as well. So imagine us doing like 5,000 times that simulation. It's very hard, isn't it? But nowadays we have some things that can help you, us out. By the way, just before I jump to, to show you, we can, leave it, we can answer two questions. Two questions. Uh, when you deliver that, that bunch of work, or how much work you can deliver in a period, period of time. Two, questions, two, two answers or two questions are valid for this case. Correct? But we don't need to do this manually. Luckily, there are some nice folks that did the hard, hard work for us, and we can use them. And I'm going to dare to do a quick demo now. If something goes wrong, last week Tesla had a problem. If Tesla had a problem, I could have a problem as well. So here, uh, just to set the stage, um, I started using like the platform Tech One. It's from Brazil. It is in English. But then I, I moved to the Fox Objective. Maybe some of you from Kanban have heard about Troy. I never know if it's Maginis or Maginis, how do you pronounce it? How do you pronounce yeah. it? Yeah. Maginis. Yeah. So try Maginis. So I've started using his spreadsheet and I'm going to show you now how it works. So here is the, the platform tech one. When I was in PI planning with not much data, it's a bit hard because I, I, I have to have some, at least two items in the backlog, history and throughput, but I haven't started my PI again I still. So, then we have to play with median, uh, some deviation, and, and percentile. Then, because of these reasons, mainly in DPI planning, I moved to this one. And that's what I, I want to show you, this probabilistic, probabilistic approach. So here, can you all see the spreadsheet? Yes? No? Maybe? So here, basically, we can just set the date that we're going to start our project. That's a possible. We're going to start Monday. Our PI will start on Monday. Uh, in my case, I was tracking how many backlog items we had. Also in API planning, we had an idea of uh, what we did, the work that we did basically. We were slicing the work, the features in stories, yes. But at some point, we started gathering uh, data and comparing features. And then we kind of did an idea of as small as going to be between 10 and 15 stories usually. Uh, as more medium is going to be between 10 and 25, and over 25 is a larger, something like that. We had like an idea of uh, how many stories could be our range of uh, giving our features. So here basically you can put, if it, we are in a pre i planning, in our case, I don't know, we'll put like, we would have at least 90 as I knew, but we could go, I don't know, 120. Uh, this is just for your backlog. How much you think it can vary? These in here uh, I want to use now, but basically, let's suppose you broke in stories in a higher level, but you know that for every five stories that you have now in your backlog, you can create another one or two because you're slicing those uh, those stories. So it's just a, a matter of variation that you can add to this spreadsheet too. In my case, I was doing two weeks, and here's a nice. Think if you don't have data or have a limited data like uh, uh, just an average, or you can play with that, you can use the parameter here estimate. Let's suppose that with the talking to the team or with this uh, short amount of data, we know that we're going to deliver know, around 15 to know, 25 items in, in is our, our range of delivery throughput. Okay, I'm not using real data yet. I'm gonna show you how to do that. But you can start having a guess here according to the 
the math that he does. Behind it, it's doing all of the calculus that I just showed you later, earlier on. And here you can have an idea of probability. So if you want to know like 85% of the time or more, we can live like possibly around the end of February. That's a high level of certainty that we can deliver given the situation around that time. If you want to take on more risk, maybe you just lower the bar of the probability. That I could do in the PI planning. As you gather data, as you have more data, what you can do is you have an option here. You have throughput samples. And you can put your real data here, your real throughput of your teams. By the way, you can use velocity as well. If you use velocity, I'm using working items, you can use Velocity. It, should, uh, it, it is a matter of uh, delivery rate as well. But by putting here my samples, I can come here and just change to data. It won't consider these numbers anymore, it will consider the data I just uh, inserted in the other tab. And here are a few nice things. It's like analyzing your throughput and give you hints in terms of and uh, how predictable you are. If your system is too stable, your throughput will be very dispersed, right? You're gonna have different deliveries, like you can see like a group, your curve may be too dispersed, that means your system is unstable. So rather than using a tool like that, better off focusing on managing flow and making your, uh, make your system more stable. Uh, the same thing works in here, so I can see one around how many sprints it would take. If I want to take more uh, risk in that, I just lower the bar. And other thing that it's nice here, we can see the probability of how many items we can fit in six sprints, pretty much. If you want to be more conservative, you go to 92. If you start lowering the bar, you can take more work, but more risk that you are taking on board. Uh, this is one of the spreadsheets. Uh, we, you may or we may need to do some work up front. Use this. This is kind of advanced. Again, if your system is not stable, you may uh, you won't get like reliable data in here. There is a book from Daniel Vacanti. He's going to be a keynote next year in the Ali uh, Dublin, Dublin Art Dublin, and it's a nice book, very good book that will basically. Uh, cover or bring you to what you need to do in order then to use this. So you may need to do some work up front rather than or to start using this right now. Um, then going back in here, here's just the screenshot in case it didn't work, but it's the same thing. So what happened in our case that? What happened? Uh, you don't do this just during the PI plan to forecast work. You should keep adding the data that you have throughout the PI or throughout the delivery. The more and reliable data you have, the better results you're gonna get, right? So here, it's one situation, one snapshot of one PI that we were about the third iteration, and this is the burn down chart. It, it looks okay-ish, isn't it? We can work harder. Just catch open here. We still, we're still lead by two, isn't it? It's easy, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just keep doing. But when I was using the simulation with the data from that PI, our delivery rate, our throughput, the backlog, updating also the backlog, and so on, I was getting something like that. Pretty much we didn't have any chance to deliver any six prints according to the simulation. Maybe around the seven and eight sprint, we would like very low uh, probability, or most likely nine or 10 sprints. By the way, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be precise here, right? I don't wanna be precise. I'm just looking to kick off conversations. And that was a good tool to kick off conversations. Look, we have to start talking about that. And we did that. So by doing that, we start engaging with stakeholders and so on, and we had to reprioritize some things, we had to discuss some other things, focus on you know, uh, maybe the team to, to, to use them in the retrospective, how we can do things differently, or what is the help that we need from stakeholders to maybe do something better. And that's what happened in the fourth iteration. 
we got slightly better, but look at the Monte Carlo simulation at that point. We increased this chance by doing those actions in around 50%. Still risky, but we made a liver. So we can still keep taking actions to reduce the risk, right? To close off, what happened? Um, again, it's, I always say that it's better to be wrongfully right than 100% wrong. And what I'm not looking, um, what I'm looking here is not to be precise, but to have an idea wrongfully upfront then when we will deliver that. And if it's not the date that we need, we need to start talking and discussing what we can do about it. So that helped us to reduce risks over that, because we were having this conversation. So we won't be able to deliver maybe everything, what will cause less pain, right? That helped the, the, to build trust and help the feedback with stakeholders. Why? Because we, I'm pretty sure that you never have this case here, that you go like, everything's all right, we call like the, um, what do you in English? Uh, the, ah, watermelon. Have you heard about the watermelon effect? Yeah. It's green outside, and then we go a bit deeper, you can see that it's red, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you have the watermelon effect. Everything's all right up to the last sprint, and then the last sprint, we can't do that. Right? Here, I was building trust because in the third sprint, midway through, we were already, well, we had the pre-I planning, we could have the discussions over that, but midway through, we were still keeping having conversations to achieve the goals that we wanted. So, engaging more. And of course, this helped to manage budget. So we will be able to deliver everything, what will have the uh, highest cost of delay. That's for some prioritization. And to wrap up is, takeaways, we have to acknowledge that complexity is in software development. Uh, data is important. I think that data is what can really help us to put, put, better, put us in a better spot rather than the estimation. We are very bad at estimating mainly time. Um, as I said, I, I don't want to be, if there are people from statisticians here who may want to kill me right now, but I, I don't want to, it's, it's not fail safe. What I want really is to kick off these conversations and to have a bit more of predictability. I don't want to be precise that we're going to deliver this amount at that date. Okay? I want to have a rough idea what is the probability and kept that following up that probability. And it gets better as you feed this with real life data. Right? Just to finish off, I think my time is almost gone. This is a learning from that journey. It was about a year-ish. Uh, things got way better. The, the environment got better. The stress was relieved a bit. From we had pressure to deliver things what we committed to, and by using those tools, we start having this more collaborative environment, bringing stakeholders, POs, PMs, and so on on board that helped us to have a better and more reliable environment. So every even though I have very basic probability forecast, I think it's much better than falling blind a plan. That's it, folks. Uh, if you have questions, I may have one minute. And uh, if I can answer them all, I'm going to be in a break just here by the door on the Amon Solutions stand. Pop up there if you want me to show you more data from the spreadsheets I have and so on. I'm going to have a chat. Or if you want to. A belly jeans or a jelly beans, <laughs> have nice jelly beans there, just pop up and have a chat. I'll be glad to answer any question. I may have time for you. one if there is, otherwise, you can just continue in great time. Thank you for your time.